Nigerians have complained that despite the nice gains in the past week, the cost of goods and services remain high. The Naira miraculously recovered to 680 Naira to the dollar after reaching an all-time low of 900 Naira to the dollar. Black market traders attributed the sudden improvement to ease demand and increased inflows of FX in the market. On the show today, we will be looking at why Nigeria's foreign reserves remain under pressure. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Now, first off, the need to address the lingering challenges in project management has again been re-echoed. This was the major focus at the 2022 conference of the Project Management Institute Nigeria, themed Resolving Project Failure Issues in Public and Private Sectors. Details in this report. Research into Nigeria's project landscape indicates that delivery remains a huge concern, put at over 70%. According to the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, there exists a large quantum of uncompleted projects in the country, estimated at 12 trillion naira in the last 20 years. This expo is meant to bridge gaps between private and public sectors, share learning and find solutions to problems associated with project failure. For me, one of the reasons why I think project failure is that we don't have enough certified project managers. Um, what I've realized, I will have a lot of artists and project managers I've been to a conference where you have a lot of engineers, over 150 people. While I was speaking, I asked them how many of them are PMPs, and only four people. But most of them had their position, half of the crowd had project managers as their title. So how will you have um, run projects by people who are not PMPs? So um, it's up to the government. One thing with PMI, PMI, we, we are not a regulator. We advocate for best practice. What it means is that we don't say you must do this. We give you the blueprint and say this is how a successful project is run. So it's up to the government to say, okay, let's take this blueprint and let's make it work. Collaboration is very important. Okay, there's a limit to what you don't know, you don't know. There is no two about it. So we want to ensure that we empower people who work within the project space. There's something we call project economy. And what project economy is all about is ensuring that values and benefits are delivered. So we want to ensure that when governments spend money in this regard, value is being delivered, okay, and also benefit is derived at all fronts. The success of large-scale capital project is dependent on how a project manager brings diverse and multi-locational teams together. In the public sector, this is more pronounced as project managers must also deal with multiple stakeholders whose opinions can strongly influence the outcome. The failure is coming largely from lack of continuity, lack of project management practices. So we have projects, even the project objectives for several of these projects, not enough buying. So where you have a project where the, the, the concept behind it has altruistic, altruistic objectives, you have people not wanting to key into it. And government policy, then funding, then uh, the concept of the investment itself, what is the objective? When you start uh, a project and there is no continuity, of course, the next, gov the next uh, government don't show interest. It means there will be project failure. The International Monetary Fund's report of 2020 suggests that countries waste about a third of the infrastructure spending due to inefficiencies. It said governments need robust frameworks to plan, allocate and implement quality public infrastructure. Welcome back. When the Naira reached its all-time low, market participants reacted by rapidly raising their prices. However, now that the exchange rate has appreciated, prices are not falling as quickly, resulting in a price rigidity situation, otherwise known as price tickiness. Uh, joining me right now is the CEO of Streetnomics, Gospel Obele. Many thanks for joining us, Gospel, on Business Insights. Thank you for having me, Jay. Great to be here today. Yeah, it is our pleasure. Uh, let's just get your candid overview concerning the situation with um, the forex uh, in Nigeria, as in vis-a-vis uh, -vis the narrative the US dollar. Over time, it's actually peaked so high, and now it's as though uh, the naira is actually gaining some sort of momentum. Can you just give us a quick overview, please? Well, um, I'm not really, really very clear about how the naira is gaining momentum because I can't see any clear mechanisms that's influencing that momentum. Um, but it's already very obvious that there are fears around the worsening state of the currency. 
and how um, that worsening state of the currency has also impacted on investors' confidence on our credit ratings, you know, more recently, on our monetary economics in terms of um, how we are leading institutionally to navigate growth and development with monetary economics and also on the fiscal side. So there are valid concerns across board that the Naira is worsening and it's gone past just um, um, speculations. It's actually happening. Nigerians are bearing the brunt and the upper class, the elite society, the elite community are already feeling the impact as well. So I understand that at that level, you know, of 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 um, impact, you know, would also lead to some form of um, um, conversations or some form of um, regulator influencing of the market dynamics to further shape the mark, to further shape the exchange rate. However, I do not particularly agree that um, the naira is really gaining strength because um, the real economic principle around currency productivity is number one: you have a productive base, um, and which you do not have right now in Nigeria. So until you have a productive base, first off. And then secondly, there are clear-cut institutionally process, institutional driven process through which your currency is being managed. When you have those two, then you can say clearly that yes, the Naira is gaining value on the ground of mechanisms. We can see, we can feel, we can touch, and there are metrics to, to show, you know, uh, for that effect, but not an overnight increase. And, you know, and Nigerians are, are still poorer within the context. So it's a false increase because if it's an actual increase, Nigerians will be better for it. Businesses will be better for it. All right, uh, let's still talk about, you mentioned it in passing, you talked about the Fitch uh, rating, uh, which has um, actually downgraded Nigeria to a B, you know. Uh, but let's talk about, uh, you know, Fitch saying that Nigeria must resolve or solve its forex shortages to improve rating. What specifically do we begin to do at this particular time? Drop into uh, a B, which is six notches uh, above the four. But anyway, but what are the specifics in real terms? What should we be looking at? You said Nigerians are not actually uh, happy as it were. They are still uh, battling with the issues of uh, you know inflation and uh, the cost of living you know, increasing by the day. So what do we need to do specifically, point by point, uh, gospel? Yes, there are a couple of things that needs to be done. First off, is to look look out for low hanging fruits and begin to. Uh, maximize them for supply side um, improvement on the exchange right now, and on that, on that conversation we're talking about the we're talking about the um, on, on that conversation we're talking about the the non oil sector. We're talking about repositioning SMEs and en ensuring that they have the right enablers to scale their products and services within and across borders. We're also talking about organizing and um, formalizing the services market. You know, um, which contributes almost 57 to 60 percent of the Nigerian economy. So, how do you take that critical chunk and begin to further formalize and organize the market? And, and when, when we say these things, uh, it's because at, at the current moment, Nigeria does not even have a national services economy or service policy. You know, so there are clear cut institutional issues that or leakages that need to be closed. And when those things are done across the real drivers of growth and development, we begin to see that it will double up quickly in terms of foreign exchange earnings. And of course, begin to balance out on the supply demand side and we begin to work as well on the local production bit of things and, and scale um, and from there. It's not as easy as I've made it sound, but it's a lot of complexities, and a lot of work. But already we've seen that there are low hanging fruits that we can make the most of to further unlock value for the Nigerian economy. So supply side, unlocking value for supply side is very critical. And until we do that effectively, there may not be some form of balancing on the FX uh, block. All right, fine. Uh, a school of thought believes that uh, for this uh, present um, changes that we have seen in the forex uh, recently in Nigeria, it's not actually as a result of uh, uh, maybe anything being done specifically by the government. You know, some believe that uh, it's the end of the year and manufacturers uh, are not exactly importing and um, a lot of Nigerians uh, would actually creep into the country and uh, would have like a lot of forex uh, you know to get uh, you know even in the in the parallel market or elsewhere that uh, the Naira might actually appreciate uh, more do you agree with that those are just flimsy flimsy um, analytical arguments you know um, that sort of want, want us to take our face away from, from the real conversation. The big question I would like to ask as well, Jay, is um, how many economies really, really thrive on those kind of window or even um, weak mechanism-driven 
argument, you know, the core is that your, the economy is unproductive, you know, the naira, the growth or, or the value of a currency is a function of the productivity dynamics of that economy. And when you talk about productivity, you're talking about education, we're talking about human capital, we're talking about doing business, we're talking about quality of life, you know, we're talking about infrastructure, both the hard and the soft critical enablers that helps the average business or the average person find fulfillment, you know, contributing productively and then scaling growth prospect and becoming prosperous doing that, not necessarily GDP growth only. So the conversation of people who come back to the country, they will bring hard current is a flimsy argument, you know, by folks who are either seeking to be political correct, politically correct, or are not are not being honest enough with the state of the Nigerian economy. Let's not forget that the same Christmas you're talking about um, in terms of how that would uh, lead to a, an increase in FX supply in the market. Do not forget that there is another side of the climate change economics that has impacted heavily on the forex, on on the on, on inflation and cost of living crisis, and that may further shape it, uh, exchange rate down the line, which is the recent flood crisis and how the major pro food production centers of the country have been, you know, destroyed or hampered or you know or, or, or affected, you know, by the flood. There are many things that are evolving and showing to us on a daily basis that the Nigerian economy needs to be sorted or to be fixed structurally, you know, on an emergency level. Not thinking or making arguments around um, 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 uh, Nigerians in diaspora who are coming down with foreign exchange. I don't think that really makes sense, you know, in terms of an argument going forward yet. The National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, uh, says uh, the country's uh, headline inflation rate uh, rose to 21.09% year on year in uh, October. That was just last month. You know, uh, but what do you really see happening? Because one would have thought that uh, with this uh, appreciation of the Naira per se, uh, maybe there would have been some levels of uh, price reduction to some extent. But over time, it's as though... Uh, uh, prices uh, of um, commodities are actually just uh, still skyrocketing uh, despite this uh, recent uh, development. Yeah, thank, you, thank you so much, Jay. I mean, w w when I started the conversation, I, I made mention of the fact that those who are arguing that the Naira has gained value are presenting a weak argument because we have not seen clearly what the mechanisms of that value increase or that appreciation has been. You know, we've not seen that very clearly. And let's not forget that if truly the Naira gains value on the grounds of productivity, it will reflect in market prices. It's just very simple economics, very simple economics. But guess what? Because whatever value we increased, whatever value we've seen recently was not built on productivity, the impact of the cost of living crisis or increase, the impact of increased cost of living is still being fed by the average Nigerian. So if you notice inflation, Yes, on a month a month may have dropped, but has still been in, it has been increasing consistently. I mean, inflation only tells us about you know the fact that oh, there is probably too much money in supply or um, uh, the, the consumption of increasing cost. But that number has been worsening on a month a month. So the big question here is because Nigerians are having to go through a lot to get down on a daily basis, simply shows to us that the cost centers are building and they are worsening. So anything outside this argument of productivity, you know, is a weaker side of the argument. And don't forget that we're in political periods, you know, where uh, propaganda statements and propaganda analysis are on the table to further distract people from making critical um, electoral decisions that they should make. I don't think the Nigerian economy is getting better in the context. I just think that um, institutional institutions at a very high level have felt the impact of the exchange rate. And they're probably doing something that we don't know but those things are not mechanical enough to drive economic productivity, but they are doing something to influence market prices. Okay, but um, gospel, it is still um, actually very alarming, the recent um, inflation rate. Uh, what do you see happening in the next uh, maybe months or weeks? Because as it is right now, it is shocking when you go to the markets today, uh, a commodity that you actually bought uh, maybe for just about 5,000 naira has actually you know, doubled to about 10,000 naira. And it is, it, is really, it is really, really, really not something that Nigerians can actually afford, knowing that um, salaries have not been increased. At the end of the day, they still get to put in more hours you know, for work, at work rather, and um, you know, disposable income is still at uh, the same level. What do we see happening in the next couple of months? Are we actually 
hitting uh, some sort of um, a hard rock in the, in the next uh, in the near future, or what exactly do we um, do we look forward to? If there are any hopes, maybe. Well, um, there are hopes, but to be honest, um, the situation is likely going to get worse a bit more, and that's Why? because Why? you have strong clear cut issues that has that have evolved in recent times. Now you have the conversation of. Um, of the flood crisis. Um, a lot of suppliers will increase the price of their inventory stock and will also increase the price of goods and services going forward into the near future. And that's because the supply chain has been badly hit, you know, by this, this, this um, our inability to pay attention to climate change and its effect on food supply. All right. And uh, of course, our lack of ability to really plan for future crises as well. So now that the, the now that the key production centers of the economy have been arrested with flood, what's that going to happen? What's going to happen is that producers or suppliers will increase the cost of inventory stock. So f- prices are going to further increase in the Nigerian economy. Let's not forget also it's a Christmas period, um, and that already has a lot of demand pressure on goods and services, especially food. Taking note that you may not have enough food to supply the economy as we move on. It's likely going to be a food crisis into the early part of 2023. So producers know these things. So they're going to hold more food items so that they can release those food items at higher prices later in the future when it's really, really clear that everybody now understands that, oh, there's a supply issue because of the flood that happened. Secondly, there's an election coming on the first, on Q1, in Q1 2023. And that's going to be a major impact. The uncertainties around the elections, the tensions around the elections are major things that are going to be shaping economic indicators as well. However, um, it's also very key for the average Nigerian to begin to think of financial literate or to engage on financial literacy in terms of ways they can further earn more income or do more business or engage investment that would secure you know assets in hard currencies, preferably. You know, because the way it's going right now, it's just a free fall of an era. All right, fine. Okay. But as we uh, end um, the year, you've not talked about um, uh, the elections, uh, which is um, just about uh, in February, uh, just uh, barely uh, two or three months. Uh, how do we, as um, if you were going to advise uh, the nation's um, economic managers, per se, you know, Nigerians need to live at least an above average life. They need to be able to go to the market and, uh, you know, with the little they have, at least get as much as they could, you know, or can to feed um, their family. What should the nation's economic managers be looking at in the shortest possible term? Because I know elections are in February and um, most of them would not even want to face the main problem because it's politics every day. What do we need to do right now? I know, is it possible that uh, in three months uh, that uh, we could actually get this little results that we expect to see so that at least we can get as little as uh, food to eat on our tables every day. I mean, thank you, Jay. It's really, really a very um, painful situation that we are in right now as a country. Yes, the foreign exchange challenge and the inflationary impact can be turned around, at least significantly to a very measurable extent within three months. But that's not going to happen within the next three months because everybody right now, especially the institutional drivers of um, economic management right now are focused on the elections or they are either focused on the elections or they are focused on being politically correct the the concept of political correctness is to um, engage engage economic priority within the lens of what is key for you to win election to retain power and to you know in, to retain control in the political landscape and that's what is important right now for the for those stakeholders uh, it's just quite unfortunate but it's just the sad truth however in the near future it would make sense for institutional stakeholders to begin to think more from a structural reform standpoint. There are a lot of low-hanging foods, and one of them would be to show up, you know, FX supply, at least to just enable some balancing out of the economy. Show up FX supply and block leakages, you know, in the exchange market. Block leakages in the exchange market and see them to be a bit more realistic about the exchange rates and how to work around parallel markets and you know demand for, for foreign exchange. I think that the central bank has got, got to underestimate you know the demand for foreign exchange. So it's very key. And I'm also interested to know that a lot of Nigerians are demanding foreign exchange not because they need it, but because of the fear of how much 
the naira may be further devalued in the future. So a lot of people are dollarizing, uh, uh, dollarizing their savings. A lot of people are showing up dollar notes, locking down dollar notes for the fear of what naira may be in the future, so they can sell much later on. So it's a very complex web of reform that needs to happen. However, it must happen because if it doesn't happen, a significant chunk of Nigerians will become poor by this time next year. Okay, fine. Uh, just uh, as a way of um, deterring a bit, uh, although we have talked about this before now, but I still just want to get another opinion concerning this uh, Naira redesign, because uh, from all uh, hull, uh, hull, hue and cry, you know, uh, the central bank is still uh, going ahead with its policy, in as much as some people have said that uh, it might bring some devastating effect. Others are saying that um, it is a welcome development. Uh, you have talked about this, but I just need you to reiterate on the effects of uh, this uh, new policy or this new, uh, this Naira redesign by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Yes, um, there are many sides to this conversation, and I still believe that it comes with a lot of mixed realities. Number one, there's nowhere in the world where you, you know, redesign currency and you want to engage a demand supply dynamics in 45 days. There is nowhere in the world. Even when the Queen of, Eng the, the Queen of England died, you know, the, the, the estimation in the, is that it will take up to 2024, you know, to be able to properly, you know, reprint and fizzle out, you know, old notes with the Queen's um, design on them to, to ensure that they now have King Charles III and the likes. So technically, it takes a lot of time. Time because you need to plan about the design, you need to plan the execution, you need to plan the rollout of these monies. You also need to manage possible impact on inflation and you know where the whole thing can spiral out of control, especially in a very, very, very um, aggressive demand-driven and obsessive economy like Nigeria. You know, a very high consumption-driven economy like Nigeria. You need to be very careful how you manage it. And what's off? You're trying to do all of these things in 45 days. And that's where the pressure is. So it's not a bad idea fundamentally, you know, in terms of redesigning your notes. But the style of the execution, the timing of the execution is a bit very, very, very worrisome. You know, although there's a convention that it's also the gate, the plan is also to discourage vote buying, as the central bank will be in position to uh, influence supply of the new currency. Um, we don't really know how that will go yet because we know that a lot of these things happen, you know, behind closed doors. And then again, there's going to be some inequality around vote buying as well or vote selling, whatever the case may be. You know, it's going to be a tussle of who has the highest um, um, bulk of the new notes. And, as, and you would agree with me that Nigerians will be very hesitant to accepting old notes because by then word has been on the street that it's going to be illegal from the 1st of February. So there are a lot of things that are mounting pressure on this policy. And it's scary that either way it goes, it's going to lead to inflation because the pressure and the crunch time to deliver on this policy is not really, really going to serve the economy very good. So the, the policy is not bad, but it could have still, you know, it could have been executed within a, re a much more reasonable frame. But clearly, there's also some, some political undertone to the rollout of this policy, which is really going to make it very difficult to properly execute uh, without being, um, um, without spiraling out of control into variables like inflation and exchange rates and the likes. All right, thank you so much, uh, Gospel, for finding time to share this uh, insight on, of course, the Forex uh, challenge in Nigeria and, of course, uh, the Naira redesign. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me, Jay. Really nice speaking with you again. Thank you so much, Gospel. And that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching.